let's take a look at generating some objects. We're going to create, we're going, we will implement a game piece um, class and a board class. And we see we've been given a few UML diagrams, uh, one for game piece and then a description of, of what it is to do, and another for the board class. And so we'll start with the game piece class and see what that looks like. I also have another file called play.java and it is going to make use of and call those pieces. So we'll see what that looks like and then we can even update it and make use of some of the other uh, methods that we've created. But that's a good test that it's working. I know how it's supposed to work. So if we implement it correctly, this will work. This will run. So let's see if we can get this working. Um, so the game piece class has one, um, one attribute. It holds a private um, instance variable called symbol. And so we'll just make a note to ourselves. Um, when we see this in the UML diagram, um, what that's telling us uh, is that we have a private, that's what the minus sign stands for, um, string that will be expected as an instance variable in the game piece class, and it will have the name symbol. Okay, that's all set. And, um, and then we'll go back to the UML diagram and we'll see that there's also a constructor method. And we know it's the constructor method because it's called game piece. Um, and that is the name of our class. And so the constructor is always going to have that name. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna write constructor method and it's going to look like uh, this. Uh, and when you see that um, plus game, game piece, this, it has the same name. Um, what that means is the plus is public, and we're going to create a method called game piece, and it's going to ex expect a string. And in fact, if we look back at our instructions, we're given a little bit more information, and that is it initializes a symbol with what it's passed, so that's sim. And so I'll be consistent with that, and not that it matters. I could have named, this is just a variable, uh, that I could have named anything I wanted. And, but <laughs> for consistency's sake, we'll call it that. And so what it's meant to do, um, so this constructor method is called when we create a new um, game piece object. And so when, if you see in code, you know, something like uh, game piece um, g equals new game piece, right? Um, and then you're going to pass it a string of some variety. We're not going to do that here, but when this is called, when that happens, what's taking place is that we're passing that value x, we're passing that um, to sim, the x will go into sim, and this method will run. So that will take place. And what happens, what we want to happen is that the string symbol attached to game piece is updated to be whatever they gave us. Um, so whatever the constructor method sends this way is going to be um, set and this instance variable will be will be in, initialized to whatever value is passed. So if I look in play.java, we'll see that actually does happen um, twice. Um, a new game piece is created. It's a variable, a game piece variable called x and a game piece variable called O. Um, and when this, um, I'll zoom in, when this new operator, um, new game piece is created, this calls that constructor method. And it passes the x um, over to the constructor method. The x goes into the variable sim. And then we see on that next slide, this dot symbol, our instance variable associated with that game piece, is set to um, x in that first instance. Okay, so uh, the next thing we have in our instruction list is two things. Um, let's see, we've got, um, I'm gonna just, they're both gonna return symbols. So I'm just going to, um, so the first one, I'll copy them one at a time. So the first thing we see is this, um, and there's that means we have a public uh, method that's going to return string, and it's going to be called get symbol. 
and it is not uh, taking in any, it has no parameters, it's not expecting any arguments, and all it's going to do is return um, this dot symbol. And I could just write symbol, uh, but it's good practice if, if you're working with an instance variable to always use the this operator, and that way there's no ambiguity, you know, if one day this method gets changed and we're taking, you know, we have a string symbol, there's no confusion. Um, it, there's no ambiguity of what's happening. Uh, this is this is where we want to go. Okay, so if we go back, the next thing we want is a two string, and a two string um, is a really important piece. And we'll step through an example of where that comes into play in play.java. Um, but essentially. And I'll, I'll show you in a second. First, I'll just write the method from what we know. It's it's there's a plus. It's um, so that tells us it's public. It had it's going to return a string. So we'll say it's a string, and it's called to string, and it has no parameters. And we were told also that it just returns uh, this dot symbol. Okay, so that's game piece done, or what we've been asked to do of it. And I just want to go back to uh, this location. Um, so some of this won't yet work, uh, but everything above line 13, so all of this should run right now. So what I'm going to do um, is just put a comment out, all of that piece, and we'll just run it to make sure that we don't have any hiccups. It's always good to test things as you go and make sure things are working as expected. Now, it's not gonna output anything at the moment, is it? Um, and that's okay, uh, because we didn't ask it to. Um, but behind the scenes, if this runs, what that means is this game piece X was successfully created, game piece O was successfully created, and in fact, we created an array of game pieces just as you can have an array of object or of integers or doubles, strings, you can also have an array of game pieces. And so here's an example of, of my uh, pieces <laughs> array, which holds one X and one O game piece. Okay, I'll just do quickly call up um, the two string and I'll show you how that works. So it returns a string. Like if we look back at the two string, method it's going to return a string so over here if if i type x which is the name of one of my game pieces dot uh to string it comes up as an option so because it's a functioning game piece object it has that method attached to it so that's all great um, but what would happen is not much here it returns a string to this location so the way that we actually make use of that is we use um, we use output just as we normally would and we, we return the string there. Um, and so I'll delete that down below. But what happens then is whatever is returned from that method is output on that line. And so I can go ahead and do that for both. And we can see that uh, both the X and the O game piece objects have the two string attached to them and all other uh, attributes and methods associated. And if I output these, it should output capital X and capital O. And so there it does. So we see that's working. Um, it's a useless uh, piece of code, so we'll delete it. Um, but we can feel pretty good that our game piece is now functional. And now we need to create the board. Um, okay, so, so let's go over. We see our board is empty. We haven't done anything with it, um, but that's okay. Uh, we can look back to the instructions and see what is asked of us. So there's a few things um, going on. Oops, this is in the wrong place. I'm going to move it. Um, there's a few things going on here. We've got uh, two attributes, um, two fields that we can create. And we then see below, we have, have several methods doing various things. Um, we've got a, a board um, constructor. 
we have another board constructor. So that looks odd. And also it takes as input board. We're gonna leave that for last, okay? So this one is uh, a little bit more special. That will be the last, the, the last problem we undertake today, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna wait on that one until we get everything else sorted. Uh, but for right now, we will, uh, we'll start with getting grid and size in place and then we'll create the constructor. Okay, so the first thing we need um, is we have, um, we expect the following um, attributes or fields. We expect um, a grid, which is a string array, and we expect a size, which is of type integer. Both are set to private, and it's, it's appropriate to have private instance variables uh, unless there's a really compelling reason to do otherwise. Um, so the first thing we have, um, oops, I copied the same one twice. Oh, what did I do? I pasted instead of copied. We'll get you every time. It's always sad when the computer does exactly what you tell it to and not what you want to. Um, so this is a two-dimensional string array grid, and that's really the basis for our board, right? That's that's what the board is going to um, exist upon. And it will hold the different game pieces as we play them. And, um, and then the next piece is, is size. And when we construct a board, we're going to have to know what size it is. So we'll pretend that we're creating a square board um, and it has an integer size. Okay, so what that means is that helps our constructor make sense. It's it's a public um, constructor method as it should be, and it's taking in an integer. And so it must have the same name as the class. This is what's utilized when we create a new um, a new uh, board. And essentially, what we want to do in this moment then is is set grid. Um, equal to a new uh, string array of size, um, no, I'll say this dot grid. Uh, maybe I'll, I don't have to call it size. I'm just gonna call it um, n, um, an n by n uh, string array. And so that will be initialized. Each of those uh, positions in the n by n array will be set to null, okay, until we do something interesting. Um, but this makes uh, oh, this makes use of a few things. The other thing that we want um, is uh, this dot size is set to n, and so we can kind of see where that n is coming from. And size is going to be utilized elsewhere, and so for that reason, we're going to set that up uh, with n. Okay, let's look back here. Um, so. If I look at what's left, um, I've got a few things going on. Um, so copy over some information so that we can see uh, what we have. We have plus add piece, gain piece, int, int. And I don't know what it's doing yet. That's okay. Uh, for right now, what I'll do is, is note that it says plus, so it's public. It's returning Boolean. We'll just get it set up, and then we'll go look at the description of these. Um, but we should be able to, to set up at least the signature of what we're creating from this alone, right? So um, it should be taking in a game piece, uh, P, <laughs> it, an integer X, and an integer Y. I have no idea what they represent because I haven't looked ahead. Um, but that's, uh, that's at least starting us off, okay? The next thing we have is a move piece. Oh, and it's not quite a valid um, stub uh, yet um, because it's not returning anything. So we could say return false for right now, and now actually we could run that method. It would successfully run. It wouldn't do what we expected, but it is returning. Um, it's at least returning uh, false. Oh. I didn't put a name. I'm like, why is this a problem? So I get the under red underlines as well. Um, so clearly I just forgot to type um, the name. So add piece. 
I could see that it was red. Um, actually, I'll go back and, and show you how I knew that's what it was. Um, when you hover over it, um, it show, shows the error. It says, cannot return a value from a method with void result type. And I thought, why is it void? It clearly says Boolean. Um, that's what went through my head. But then I realized it, it had to assume then that Boolean was the name and it wasn't returning anything. So um, that fixes everything. So if you see that red squiggly line, fix it before you go any further. Okay, the next thing you get is this, um, oh, uh, oh, is move piece. So we'll copy that and we'll come back to um, adding more details uh, in later, but we'll just get this set up. It's public because of the plus, it's returning Boolean, it has a name, and now I remembered to use it, move piece. Um, and it's gonna take in four integers. I have no idea what they are, um, um, but we'll figure it out later in why, um, and we might even change the name of these uh, because, well, first of all, I can't start at X if I'm W, uh, X, Y and int Z. Uh, we'll probably give them more appropriate names when we come back once we understand what it's doing. And again, I'm just going to return false just to have a placeholder. Okay. So, so this is what I would do to kind of get things working. So then I can run the initial file. And then I've got get. I have a pretty good guess as to what this is doing, um, but we'll just wait um, and still continue to the same approach of like, let's get the, the, the method stub set up and then we'll come back to it. Um, so public, it's because of the plus again, we are uh, returning a game piece and that's how I know uh, what I think is happening and get int x int y. Okay, and I think I know what that is. Um, it's a little bit harder. Um, game piece g equals new a game piece um does game piece need oh yeah um temp and this is just uh this will change all of that but at least now i'm returning a game piece so i remember that i'm going to have a game piece that i return my bet is that what we're asked to do is grab from you know maybe row x column y we're going to get um, the game piece associated with it. Okay, we'll look at that later. Finally, oh no, not finally, um, is a two string method. And, you know, this is what is, as I said before, this is what's output uh, when we print uh, the board. And, I mean, I could step through, I'm going to take a guess as to what I do for that as well. Um, it's gonna return a string. Um, it's my two string. And, and we'll step through uh, what that is, but for right now, I'm gonna return, okay, that. And finally, um, contains. And this is just a, a funny little method. It probably just checks to see did, um, I would have suggested that position contains, but we're only passing game piece. So it's more like, does the board contain that game piece would be my guess. Um, and so we'll take a look at what that is asking for us to do. So we turn Boolean um, contains and <laughs> game piece G. Okay. And we're gonna return false just as a placeholder. Um, so all pieces, it, no, it doesn't work the way that one would hope. Um, certainly we haven't looked at any of the descriptions, um, but what it does do, which is great, is it's we've set it up so that technically, other than meeting those descriptions, um, the UML diagram is met. Um, it's, it's not doing what we wanted, but uh, but what we see, those those pieces went from um, from red to white, um, and so you know I can run this and it won't it will compile and it will run. Now it doesn't do anything 
logical whatsoever. The only thing it did at the end, and none of this actually worked properly, um, it did output the board, but of course it didn't actually. <laughs> it just output an empty string because that's what we've set up. So now we can go through then and, and add in the details. Um, and so to do this, um, I'm going to be a little smarter about this and I'm going to actually create um, a javadoc comment for each and that's where I'm going to put the information. So the first, what am I doing first? Um, the first thing I have is um, add piece. And so add piece, I'm going because I'm skipping this one. Well, remember, I did not create that one. And so far, I can see that it's not utilized in here. Um, the only time I create a board, I'm only passing an integer. And so the only constructor method used um, is this one. And we'll talk about later what this means um, and why one might use that. But for right now, um, we'll focus on adding a game piece. Okay, so if I go back to board, um, I can see um, it says if what we're saying uh, is um, we're going to, if grid row column is empty, assign a piece to it and return true, otherwise return false. So we're just looking to see if we can, if we can add a piece there, um, then we're going to return uh, true. Um, so essentially what we have to check, the reason we would return false um, is if that is empty, uh, is, sorry, if it is not empty. So, um, we will, um, first need to create the Boolean variable that we're going to return. And that is, uh, we'll call it is empty or was empty, but is empty equals, uh, we'll assume it's empty. Um, well, actually we'll assume it's not. And then if it is, um, then we can play. Okay, so if, um, and so we wanna check if grid row column. And so this is actually uh, what we're being passed is a game piece and we're passed a column. Um, so we need to change those uh, here. I don't have to change these names, but it helps to be able to read these later. It helps us to identify uh, what's actually happening, right? So, um, so if um, this dot grid, uh, the grid, it's a string array, row, row, column, call, um, and if it's empty, um, it's, uh, it's null then um, what we want to do is set grid uh, sorry this dot grid uh, row column and uh, we want to set that equal to uh, we want to put a piece there and we want to put the game piece there and and the thing is we want to place that game piece but we're given a game piece and so Placing a game piece doesn't exactly work. What we want is the symbol associated with that game piece. And so um, so the way that we would do that is get the symbol, and we've already created the game piece, and it, we know it has a get symbol, so we can set it equal to whatever its game piece's symbol is, okay? And then the other thing we have to do is say is empty equals true. So if it were true, we need, if it was empty, and you know, if it, if it makes it easier for you to understand what's going on, you can change it to was empty or you're able to play. Whatever means something to you, as long as it works, um, it's good to go. Okay, so um, so again, um, we, can, we can run this and check that everything is working. Now, again, the logic is not all in place, but it's just a good check that, you know, I didn't add a miss a semicolon or do something ridiculous, um, it's really easy uh, to do that. So so that's just a quick check, sanity check, um, that things are going about as planned. Um, so now we're to move piece and uh, move piece. So I'm going to, 
again, um, put in some details um, of what this is doing. So move piece um, oh, has if grid row, start row, start column, um, end row, end column is empty, um, is not empty, and grid end row, end column is empty, then we're going to move the game piece from the start element to the end element and return true. Okay, otherwise we're going to return false. So um, essentially this, um, this, this false value that we have here is we're returning whether or not we can move. And so I'm going to just go ahead and create something like can move. Um, we're going to set it to false to begin with, and then we'll make some checks. And if we can move, um, uh, we'll set that to true. Okay. So first thing um, um, is we need something to represent um, the row and the column. So we know that these are now, we now know that it's representing row one. Um, um, and if you want to be specific, you can spell it out or you give it a better name. <laughs> I'm being quick and lazy with this, um, but essentially we see here we're, we're going to move something from start row, start column to end row, end column. And, you know, if you wanted to be a better human being, you could have given it those names um, and then it would have matched the comments entirely. As I said, it doesn't matter as long as, um, as long as this all makes sense to you. If I was getting paid um, to do that, I would be uh, better about it. <laughs> uh, but I'm just making this as a good example. So um, what I should have done is copy those at the same time. Start call or created this after the fact. And row and call so we can see everything's kind of aligned. Um, and we could go back and fill in the detail appropriately. You know, it's um, we're going to return true if uh, we can move, uh, false otherwise. Okay. So, so to check if we can move, then what we have to do is check all of this, um, and that is um, we want to check um, if. Um, so we have two pieces, right? First, we want to check that the first is not empty. So, um, and handily, because I did adopt that that piece, I'm going to say this dot grid start row start column. If that's um, if that's not um, equal to null, and um, the end row column is empty. So the last piece is that that last piece um, is equal to null. Then um, we want to go ahead and um, and first of all let us know that we can move. And second of all, we need to move. Um, and the way that we do that is um, we say this dot um, this dot actually I'm just going to copy this grid start row column um, set that to null and we're going to say this dot uh, oops again I'm going to copy oops no I want to do that first oh, okay let's let's talk about why I know I need to do that first so first of all um, it's I need to steal what was there so if I'm allowed to move, then the first thing that I need to do is take whatever is held here and move it, right? Um, and so just, um, this is the game of, of, you know, I have x is equal to four and, um, and I want to move, I want to move it to, oh, just silly, y is equal to zero, for instance, I want to move this over. And so if I first say x is equal to zero, um, I don't remember what was held in x. So um, so the way that I could move those, I can say um, I can say y is equal to x, right? And then and then say x is equal to zero. 
right so i need to do it's the order of operations i had to first set that end row end column equal to where whatever started there okay so we can run things again life is good um Okay, and now we want to get a game piece. And so I can go look at what the description says, but I assume it, we're going to return the contents of whatever is held there. Um, and so, in fact, I could have used that. Um, I could have, I could have used that in in the above if I wanted to, and I can even show you what that looks like. Um, but I, I also don't need to because in here I do have access. Um, and so essentially we're taking in a row and a column and I'm just going to change the values row column and oh I had, I had originally set up a game piece as um, oh that's funny so this whole thing um, it says we're returning a game piece, but it, which probably we should be doing, um, but then I'd have to change other pieces up here. So I may disagree with my uh, UML diagram, which is there's no reason the grid couldn't hold game pieces, but actually, where is the description that said we're going to put in a, um, oh no, it's because it's holding, it's a string array. So in fact, I'm going to update something and I'm going to update it in the diagram. And that is, it doesn't make sense for the board to hold strings. In my mind, the board should hold game pieces. And so it should be a two dimensional um, game piece array. Um, and so to update that, it actually kind of makes more sense with the rest of what's being held. I'm going to fix, we're going to upgrade our, our piece. Um, and We'll see we have other issues going on, no doubt. Um, yeah, sure, because this is uh, a string array game piece. And, um, and then we can just uh, take the game piece and stick it there. That actually made more sense. We received a game piece. We didn't have to get this symbol. We just put the game piece into that grid and what else any red everything else seems to work though it could break other pieces <laughs> so we'll find out um it's all okay um let's in fact let's just run things to make sure we haven't broken the world uh all good uh maybe that was just a typo in the uml diagram and we're making everything better okay so because i return a game piece that's this was the, the key to the kingdom that said, yeah, you know what? This should have asked us um, to store not a string array, two-dimensional string array as the grid, but a game piece array, which makes more sense. It's not an array of strings. It's an array of game pieces. Okay. So if we, um, if we want to find out if a game piece is held there, um, or if we want to place a game piece if we want to get back the game piece that's held in that position, um, what we need to do is set that equal to uh, whatever is held in um, this dot grid uh, row column. That is a game piece, okay? And then we can return that. So that actually makes a lot more sense with that structure. I'm going to come back to this two string right now. It's not doing anything. Um, but I, I'm gonna actually I'll just create it so so let's think about what we have um, and I'll create a logical two string that kind of makes sense so I've got rows and columns of game pieces but I don't want to output I want and I want to output that grid but I what I don't want to do is output the game piece object what I want is the symbol that represents it and so this works great um don't i have do i have i have a game piece get symbol okay so we can make use of this method in doing so okay 
So, um, so the ask here then is to loop through the grid. So um, we know it's a square grid. It's an array of game pieces. And we also know that the size of it is, is whatever the instance variable size was set to. And so we can say for uh, int uh, row equals zero, um, row less than this dot size, row plus plus. Um, and then we can look through the columns for uh, int column equal uh, zero column less than this dot size because it is a square grid call plus plus. And then um, what we want to output, um, so as we go for one row, as we go, we want to output each of the pieces in the column. So the first thing we want to do is, um, oh, we don't want to print line, we want to just print and we want to take whatever is the game piece that's held um, in this dot grid in row column, but that's a game piece. So we want to get back the symbol. And, and then I also want to put a space between these pieces just because I think it will be cleaner. And then when we get to the end of the row, we just need to output a, an empty line. Okay, so hopefully that does something um, that kind of works. And in fact, I think um, it does use that. So we can um, go ahead and, and so the reason I know it uses a tic-tac-toe in this example is a board. So when I output a board object, it's going to then call up this two string method that we just concocted and we'll see if that uh, if that works. So we'll run play, whoops, and we have some error. Um, two string, oh, well, we, first of all, we didn't set up a string, I just output things, which is not the right way to create a two string, first of all, um, so, sorry. Um, um, so what we should have done is created a string and then we're going to create this output string. Okay, um, and instead of printing, we're just gonna keep adding to it. So the same idea, um, so this is what we, we were going to print um, and instead what we're going to do is, um, is say output string plus equals. So we're gonna add that to add, create this longer string. But then what do you do with the system out.println? Um, well, what I wanna do in that situation is keep adding to my string, but what I wanna do is add a new line. And the way that I do that is by adding a new line character. Okay, so that caused a lot of problems. That's on me. And then we have some other problems. So let's figure out what we've gone wrong. Oh, so now, uh, what else did I do that's silly? Get symbol because this da 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 is null. Okay, um, this is a fun one. So, um, so um, essentially um, what's happened is in calling this, um, if there is no grid piece associated, then um, you can't really get symbol the way that it's set up right now. And um, I think what I'll do is just fix it here by saying if, essentially what we wanna do is check um, that this isn't null, right? If this, uh, whatever's held in that position is null, then we're gonna do one thing. Um, otherwise, we're going to do essentially what I was trying uh, to do in the first place, um, which is add a string together. Okay, so <laughs> what would we have done here? Um, output the string, uh, uh, the output string, we're just gonna add um, we can decide what, like what an empty, uh, an empty position looks like. Um, oops, I just and then a space. We could do put nothing, um, but uh, functionally we just have to output something. So let's see if that runs. We still have something. Oh, I didn't delete this. 
So now we can try to run it and see what happens. Okay, so now we see that something's functional. Okay, we haven't created the last piece, um, which is contains. So I'll just say if, if the game piece exists anywhere on the board. Um, so, uh, so I'll go ahead and just say that. Um, return, uh, so this is going to look, uh, look for existence of game piece G on the board. Okay. Um, and so we're taking in a game piece and we're going to say, um, uh, we're going to create a Boolean um, game piece uh, or yeah, piece exists. And we'll say, we'll assume it's false. And then we'll, if we find it, we'll set it to true. Piece exists is what we're gonna return. So what we need to do then is again, loop through the entire board. Um, and so what we can say is, you know, for, I can even copy and paste. Um, we're gonna loop through the entire board. We're gonna go the, let the rows um, run from, um, uh, one uh, to the end and uh, and what we can say is if um, grid row call and this time we want to say dot equals because we're checking for object equality if that's the same as our object um, G that we were passed then this is equal um, then whoops, did I put a parenthesis? Yes, I did. Um, then piece exists is equal to true. And we can break out of, of all of this mess. Okay, so, um, so the way that we can check that, and I don't think we've called it at all, um, but we can check here, um, um, sout, um, tic-tac-toe, we can check um, dot, uh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> contains, contains, does it contain the piece X? Um, we're just gonna get true or false, but we'll just see if it, um, oops, I did not like that. What, have, what am I supposed to pass it? Board dot contains, cannot evoke object equals object. Um, oh, it's null, um, right. So what that means, and the reason we're getting that error, um, if, if it happens to be null, um, then this doesn't work very, it just doesn't work. So, um, so the way that you can fix that is something kind of fun. Um, you could do, um, this is first check that it's not equal to null. And if it is equal to null, then the whole thing is false. Um, and because I'm going to put an and there. Um, and then if it's not, then you can actually check it against uh, object equality. So let's just give that a go and see what happens. Um, and so it says true, um, which is pretty much what we had hoped to expect. Um, uh, so if I instead, and so that's a, a game piece that we already have. If I create another game piece, um, say uh, y and we let that be value y and i do a check on contains does it contain y it should show up false so it doesn't contain that um so that's an example of creating game pieces there's all sorts of pieces that we can do here um the only other piece that we didn't create was this board and there are reasons and we're not going to go through all the reasons for this um, but there are reasons that you might want to pass a board um, and it's mostly if you want to make moves but you want to start with a new board object that's a copy of the old board object um, and so it's a really easy thing to do um, 
And so you think about, well, what does that even mean um, if I'm past a board B? Um, how would I want to initiate any of these? Well, um, do we have uh, we have move piece, game piece, string? Oh, let's just look at this. Um, we've got add piece, move piece, get um, a game piece, two string, and contain. So I don't have anything that's like get the size of it, um, but it's an array, like it's a game piece array. So I actually know that I can just kind of get that one for free, right? Um, so what I could do if I wanted to get the size, it would be b dot um, uh, size. So this will be a little bit different though. Um, and that is, uh, you might be really tempted to type beat up grid here. Uh, and that would technically uh, not fail uh, in the sense that we could run it um, and and things would sort of function in the sense of uh, they'd run. Um, but um, I'm going to show an example of why that doesn't work. So let's, um, in fact, um, I'm going to take get rid of this one. And before we output the tic-tac-toe board, um, I'm going to create a new board. So we're going to call it board uh, uh, tic-tac-toe. We'll call it new board. And we'll say new. And we're going to call the, the new board uh, constructor method where we pass a board. And that board, in this case, is going to be the board uh, tic-tac-toe. And Java can then dynamically decide, oh, okay, well, now she's passing me a board. That means if I'm going to choose between the two constructor methods, uh, I'm going to choose this one because I'm not passing an integer. I'm passed a board as an argument. So, um, so what that means, and so we'll we'll be a little tempted right now to see think that this is working. A new board. I can output both. Actually, I'll put a, a, a blank line in the middle. And we'll see that they look very much alike. And so we know that's kind of a copy of the board that we're trying to make. But um, I'm going to do something a little fun before I output them. And that is I'm going to, um, so I'll just say um, this is um, tick, tack, toe. And um, this is my uh, new board. Uh, and so you can see um, they output in that sequence. And so it seems like no problem. I've got two of them. But um, if I, now I have a board that I can place game pieces on. So I can go ahead and add a piece. Uh, and let's say on the new board, I wanted to add it right there. Um, that is, I want to add an X, let's say, in row one, column one. So right in the middle. And row index one, row column index one. Um, if I run this, we'll see something maybe a little surprising. And maybe you've already spotted it, but it placed an X on both boards. And that is because of a very important piece. Um, if we do this while it runs, uh, what we've done is we said um, this array, uh, right? It's an array of great game pieces, is set equal to uh, this array. <laughs> so What's wrong with that? Well, they're reference objects, right? So now they're referring to the same place. And so we make a change in one, we make a change in the other. Uh, so the way that we fix this um, is we now have a size, right? And so we can create something like this. Uh, we can say this, um, this dot grid is equal to new um, game piece um, this dot size by um, this dot size, which is what we wanted to do in the first place. Um, but if we actually want, and, and I can run it so we can see that that at, at least works. And it does. Um, and the piece was added, but we don't have a copy. And that's what we really wanted. So to make a copy of that board, we would actually have to loop through um, um, for uh, int row equals, so our standard, zero, 
um, to row less than this dot size, row plus plus, and we can go through all of the columns, call equals zero, uh, call less than this dot size, call plus plus. Now we can say, um, now it's safe to say this dot grid row call is set equal to whatever is held in the other board. Um, actually, um, b dot grid uh, row call, and there's even a um, a method we could have made use of uh, there. But uh, this is this is essentially what we want to do. And if if we now go back and run our our play dot Java, we'll see that it actually. Uh, worked out just fine. And so we were at, able to add the pieces and we could have a lot of fun with this. Um, we can actually play, uh, play a game back and forth and, and um, we can do that at a later time. But for right now, uh, we accomplished that first mission. We've implemented the instructions that we were given. So we'll move on and we'll come back to that later. Happy coding.